गुड डे एवरी वन दिस इज़ रुशाद मिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एंड विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन रोबोट कॉन्फिग्रेशन दिस इज़ द थर्ड वीडियो ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज एंड टूडे आई बी डिस्कसिंग जॉइंटेड आर्म कॉन्फिग्रेशन द लर्निंग आउटकम्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन आर एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन द स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन जॉइंटेड आर्म कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रोबोट्स एंड आइडेंटिफाई एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दीज कॉन्फिग्रेशन बेस्ड ऑन दियर फीचर्स सो लास्ट वीक वी सॉ some other configurations which were quite out outdated and um, the, the the jointed arm configuration that we are going to study today is by far the most widely used configuration by almost all industrial ma robot manufacturers today yeah, i i can say that it accounts for nearly more than 90% of the configuration that is made today so if you look at the figure here this typically shows the jointed arm configuration it is also called as the articulated a configuration in some by some textbooks and authors but prefer calling it jointed arm because these typically refer joints of an arm so that's how the name is um, these are tip these robots like like we discussed in the previous session are defined by the first three axes and these are all rotary and so it is also called as an rrr configuration r being rotary 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 configuration uh, this configuration exhibits the highest dexterity amongst all configurations which is which you will see in a minute Uh, and is obvious from the work envelope that this particular configuration has the rotary joints connect the links to the arms and the actual industrial robots if you add the three axes of the wrists are typically six axis industrial robots so the now if you take a look at this figure like we were discussing this is by far the most widely used robotic configuration and one of the reason it is widely used is it has one of the largest work envelopes for a given size and it's quite a very this the envelope is not just big but it can reach difficult places which is obvious but if you look at it it is okay it can almost reach the floor of its mounting so it has a very wide reach very flexible reach and hence it's the most dexterous com configuration that you can find nearly more than 90% of the robots sold are uh, jointed arm configurations the issue with this obviously in the past remember was the robot solution was quite complex so uh, when it was introduced in the 70s uh, it, the software actually came at a premium nowadays this is no longer an issue most uh, software and hardware is advanced to a such a um, such a level that this is by default the de facto standard which is available in industry and hence it accounts for more than 90% of the all ro of all robots so this is very typical work envelope of the jointed arm configuration um i all have recommended that uh, for this particular subject that you refer to the actual manuals by different robot manufacturers because they give more extensive data than any textbook that is available on this particular subject so i have included a snapshot of a manual uh, from motorman which is also one of the top robot manufacturers so this will give you what is a realistic sense the operating area of this robot along with certain specs okay this this will give you in a nutshell how this particular configuration is used when it will be deployed in a work cell so this is this is typically the work area another view actually is also available uh, and if you look at the specs you have uh, the axis against the maximum motion range you have maximum speed and the allowable moments so it tells you what the amount of load each axis can actually bear and you get an idea what kind of work you can deploy this particular robot for for, for example in this particular case this robot has six control axes say three being the first three axes while well, three obviously are the wrist maximum payload is 400 kg so this is a very heavy um, payload category robot repeatability is a spectacular plus or minus 0.5 mm which is extremely good for the robot of this particular uh, size and payload then obviously have the vertical and horizontal reaches uh, its protection ratings weight etc this robot weighs more than 2 tons total and it, it is driven by a three phase power supply this indicates that the drive for this particular motor is an ac electric drive which is also the most common drive that you will find for most electric robots um, very high speeds are also there in terms of rotation of the joints though less as compared to a lower of a lower payload which is a bit obvious another example obviously is a spec sheet of a robot of a smaller configuration i i recommend that the students look this particular uh, specification up in great detail at a later stage this is just to give you an idea how the work and env work envelope of jointed arm robots are 
this robot, if you notice, is actually a, a low payload category robot around 10 kgs. So it will be used for s smaller pick and place tasks and assembly operations. One thing if you notice on the previous robot is joint speeds are definitely higher. Obviously the lower masses means more greater speeds are possible for a given accuracy. And if you notice the uh, repeatability in this case is plus or minus 0 0.01 mm. So this is also this is also one of the be best robots that you can come after. Even this particular drive is in a single phase AC and even this the robot actually is driven by AC servo motors which is also the like I said the trend nowadays robots are actually driven through AC motors and not DC motors as discussed by most books. Books tend to be quite outdated when it comes to information regarding robot drives. That's also the reason I urge students actually to look at the brochures of actual robot manufacturers so they get real, real data um, and most updated data. Um, some robot manufacturers will um, identify and uh, advertise uh, all their product lineup in terms of either the payload or the reach and what KUKA has done over here is they have given a nice table regarding the different configurations which are available. For example, they have uh, a 300 kg uh, ro robot which is available with a range of approximately 2.7 meters and they have a 120 kg robot available with 2.7 meters. The one of the largest robots, uh, uh, the robots with the maximum reach is around 3.9 meters, so just under 4 meters of reach. So one more thing is, it is better to have a, a detailed study of different configurations by different manufacturers. So you get an idea, what is the typical range of these particular robots that the manufacturers are packaging and selling. So the, in my observation, most top manufacturers um, have robots from uh, payloads as low as 2 kg to as high as something in the order of 400 kg. There may be custom built robots which have, which have payloads in excess of 800 kgs as well. So let's look at some of the images of jointed arm configurations. I have taken these two from Wiki. Uh, at the left, you will see a jointed arm configuration typically for palletizing, which is a very common application that you can find. And the one at the right uh, involves most likely um, um, uh, some sort of a cutting or welding operation. Um, another sample images, now you can see this is a modern version of the Yasaka or Motomon robot. And this is um, a slightly older version. Uh, and from the shape you can realize this typically is a longer reach and a higher payload uh, robot configuration. This one is actually from Fanuk. Again, you'll find them they're quite similar, but there are some distinctive features and uh, these are um, advertised features which you can find on the manufacturer's website. Now there's, there's also one more reason I included the, these pictures. I'll have a see, uh, I'll tell you why that, that's, that, that was the case. Now, did you notice any, uh, you can say, typical colors that you come across and is there a pattern? I believe that's so. Some manufacturers tend to prefer one particular color when they tend to uh, make their robots. See if you can find out and then we'll discuss which manufacturer tends to uh, prefer a certain color. So it's almost become a benchmark, though that's not always the case. Okay. Now continuing again, uh, typical advantages of jointed arm configurations are it has the maximum reach within uh, reach positions within the envelope so within a given envelope there are a lot of singularities but jointed arm configuration has you can say the advantage that it can reach most spaces within the envelope okay and these are available today with very high repeatability capable of fast operation one more thing is access from all sides so it allows you to um, you can say design the work workspace in a in, in a more a rather less rigid way compared to the other configuration. Uh, uh, as I said before, this is one of the most widely used configuration, and it has effectively replaced all other configurations by the year 2000. So, uh, this is the one which is being made right now. Okay. One more thing is from an academic perspective, control is more expensive and difficult than other configurations. That's why we tend to associate the, that control is, is a kind of a limitation. Though, uh, like I said before, with the advent of better hardware and software, this is no longer the case. Its advantages far outweigh its disadvantages. Uh, since all joints are rotary, construction cannot be rugged enough compared to, let's say, a cylindrical and, uh, or, or a Cartesian configuration. 
even other having said so let me tell you that even today these configurations are available with 1000 kg payload so so in spite of this limitation you can see how versatile this configuration is and that is the reason you f you'll find this configuration all the way from a 2 kg payload to nearly 1000 kg payload what applications are except for high speed assembly applications let's let's say for example electronics industry where scala robots are preferred and are advantages outright and certain applications where you need approach from top where delta configuration is more appropriate you'll see them pretty much for each and every application in industry so uh, there's no point pointing out only one or two applications this is by far most widely used application in industry altogether so therefore if right from welding to assembly line to ceiling to plasma spraying you'll find this particular configuration now what is new about this uh, the jointed arm configuration is now exclusive with almost all industrial applications, so that's the case. And these have now evolved into what is called as collaborative robot configuration. So you basically have a, a trunk-like construction with two robot arms on each side. So this is a new development which we'll see in a later chapter. And this is how you can say the development of um, uh, the jointed arm configuration is today. You can look up these sample videos on YouTube, they are quite informative and you will get a general idea of what the uh, uh, jointed arm configuration is. Um, references, there are plenty of references, like I said, m the best references ever uh, are the websites of the manufacturers themselves, those are the best when it comes to it. But for general data, I recommend International Federation of Robotics, Robot Park, which is also very informative, and some, uh, some of the other websites, along with you know, standard textbooks, which are for this particular case. Thank you, and we'll continue the discussion with robotics in the next next series.